of some of the great dishes from around the world. From Hungary, goulash. From France, coquevert. From Spain, paella. From England, um, fish and chips, or roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. And from Italy, ah, osso buco. That wonderful dish of veal or beef shank, slowly simmered with stock, vegetables and wine. And it's osso buco that's on the menu today, but the Consuming Passions version, which I call Aussie buco. And why? Because it's made with great Australian beef. Starting with the meat, I get my butcher to cut some osso buco cuts about three to four centimetres thick. You'll probably need a couple per person. There's quite a bit of bone, but that's important because the bone gives great flavour to the dish. And after all, osso buco translated means hollow bone. And that's not strictly true because it's the bone marrow which gives the dish its distinctive qualities. I prepare these for cooking by dusting with seasoned flour, a light seasoning of salt and pepper, and do this in a plastic bag, that's the best way, and then I dust off the surplus flour. These are now browned in a large pan with a little oil. Just browning both sides, they don't need to cook through at this stage. Best to do these a few pieces at a time. Now while they're browning, I prepare some vegetables, my favourite gang of four. Onion, cut into small pieces, leek cut into rings, a little celery finely chopped, and carrot, which I grate. I like it to break down to become part of the sauce. Now garlic, of course, a good five or six cloves, just crushed, and these are all gently cooked in a good oil. Or you could use butter or a mixture of the two, but just oil if you're looking to keep down your intake of saturated fat. Once the meat is browned, I flame it with a little brandy. Great for the flavour, but it provides some theatre for anyone who's in the kitchen. It's optional, but I love it. I just love playing with my food. And of course, the alcohol is spirited away. It's a good idea to stand back and watch out for eyebrows and low-flying aircraft when you do this. Once done, it's back to the vegetables and I make up a simmering sauce. I put in some stock. And although it's a beef dish, I tend to use chicken stock or veal stock. I don't want too strong a flavour. Some wine, and although the beef is a red meat, I prefer white wine, a buttery Chardonnay, for instance, would be perfect. Just a glass or so. And tomatoes, either peeled and chopped ripe tomatoes, or you could use canned tomatoes. Two final additions to make the Aussie buco great. Oregano, a generous amount of this fresh herb or half a teaspoon of the dried variety, and a couple of strips of one of nature's great flavourings, lemon rind. Now, I reduce this mixture over medium heat and then assemble the dish into a large casserole dish or a baking pan. I put a little of that vegetable sauce mixture. Then I pack in the meat pieces, trying to keep them packed as tightly as possible so they retain their shape during cooking. I cover with the rest of the vegetables and sauce and then seal with either non-stick baking paper or with aluminium foil, making sure I have a really tight fit. Then it's into the oven at about 180 degrees for a good couple of hours until the meat falls off the bone. One last thing to make this dish a triumph for consuming passions, and that is to make a little gremulata to go with the dish. A garnish made of grated lemon rind, some chopped garlic, and a generous amount of parsley. And that's it. Now, that wasn't hard, was it? No, degree of difficulty, very low. Preparation time, about 25 minutes, plus cooking time. Keepability, well, it keeps well for a couple of days in the refrigerator and is even better on the day after cooking. Traditionally, osso buco would be served with risotto milanese, a rather rich rice dish. I prefer just a plain boiled rice topped with those meat pieces and the vegetables and that wonderful sauce. A sprinkling of gremolata and the Aussie buco is complete. The perfect wine companion, some of the Chardonnay used in the cooking. From Consuming Passions, till next time, bon appétit. If you like this recipe,